what you are um, takes the position, lyrically speaking, um, it takes the position of, of the, from those who are in power. So in my mind, again, this could be, you know, sort of like governmental figures or, um, you know, even like, you could even think of the media, but I think in my mind it was sort of like the, the government, the, um, since it's in the original storyline is about the right to vote, this is sort of very much a political issue. Um, and so, you know, it, it opens basically with, um, with Elizabeth saying, I know what you are and I know what you want from me. Um, and then after that, it, it switches into this voice of, of power, which starts with my colleagues, we're sober, we're so good. Um, this threat sleeps at our door. Um, so basically, you know, it's power lamenting. Like, okay, you know, the, the barbarians are at the gate um, and they're getting ready to break through. You know, what do we do? How do we, how do we, um, how do we stop this from happening? And, um, and so again, it's sort of like power lamenting about their position. Um, and then, of course, at the end of that, it's, you know, God save us, they're knocking now, which is where Joey starts the kick drum, sort of representing this knocking, and then there's sort of this explosive ending that's just instrumental, um, which we always really loved. And, and, you know, it's really just one sort of strange chord progression um, that builds and builds and builds and builds. Um, and it actually ends... Um, with a sound clip um, from a senator uh, remarking about um, Judy Chicago's um, dinner party art installation. Um, and that's what that quote is referring to, but I thought if I just left it in there sort of in, a, in an ambiguous way, that it would, it had that vitriol, it had that disdain for, um, in this, particular case, this woman artist who had done this piece that he thought was offensive in some way. And of course you can look up Judy Chicago's dinner table and see that it's, it's really a, a beautiful piece about, you know, the history of, of um, women throughout, you know, um, human history. Um, but anyway, that's sort of that reference there and that's how that song ends. And it really I wanted it to end and I wanted it to go straight into the next song. Um, the next song is, is titled Fist to Face, um, which sort of has this aggressive sound, uh, sounding title to it. And I guess it's sort of an aggressive song, lyrically speaking, um, in that it's really, at this point, we're um, really talking about taking it to the streets and, um, you know, um, really thinking about how do, we, how do we make the change that we want to see. And, and this song really sort of talk, talks about, um, you know, sort of like, violent versus nonviolent demonstration, you know, how do we overthrow, you know, the paradigms that oppress. Um, and of course, sometimes violence has done that and other times um, it has not worked to have these sort of revolts. Um, how militant do, does a group become in order to, to create that change? And so the chorus is sort of like, again sort of um, it's not necessarily Elizabeth singing these words but maybe more like the movement um, um, if we take what we want won't we be the poorer if we make what we want won't we take this further so again this idea of sort of like making what one wants or taking you know by force what one wants um, and so I, I sort of saw those two, talk, two sorry, saw those two songs as going um, together uh, in some way, and that's why I used that link between them with that audio clip. Um, 
Fist to Face is really, um, it was actually the first song written for the album that was completed for the album, lyrically and musically. Um, uh, when the idea in my mind for this narrative was still pretty new and it was sort of unclear how it was all gonna be pieced together, but I knew that that was an issue that, that I wanted to deal with and so I was able to go ahead and write the lyrics for that. But again, it's sort of, you know, people ask, well, when you're writing these songs, you know, how do you compose it in a way that creates a narrative? And it's not linear by any means. There's a lot of writing a song and its lyrics, writing another song and its lyric, uh, lyrics. And then after you have four or five, you might say, ah, that first one's not working. I need to rewrite the lyrics or the music. Or So there's this constant editing that goes on, which in some ways can be frustrating. You know, I think if you were just writing, you know, a series of, you know, eight to 10 songs, it really wouldn't matter if in this song you had one idea, in this song you had another idea, but when you're writing a narrative-based album, you're constantly sort of evaluating what the narrative is, what the lyrics are, how they go together. Um, but at any rate, this was, um, was the first track that, that was actually completed um, and written um, for the album. Lost Our Way um, was actually a full band song, or it started that way, but none of us really liked the direction it was going. Tried it um, in some other ways, rewrote some things, and really we were just going to scrap that whole song. Um, but there was something really in the lyrics, I thought, and the melodies, I thought there was something really strong there. Um, and so we actually had started recording the full album. We were in the studio. We were almost kind of done with most of the tracking and I was doing some final touches and there was, this, there was just an empty space in the album for me. It needed, there was something missing lyrically, uh, something missing in the narrative. Um, and I, so I went back to this song and I just reworked it as sort of an acoustic, a short acoustic, um, song that could be really part of the next song, which is How Long We Wait. So um, within, I don't know, two hours, I had, I had actually recorded that song. And what you hear on the album is really, that was recorded in a couple of hours. Um, I wrote it, rewrote it, set a microphone up for recording the acoustics, and I just went for it. Um, and I, I found that at the, at the end of that song, it ends on an A, which is what um, How Long We Wait begins on. And I was able to sort of link the two together. And it was just one of those moments that were like, oh, you know, thank God that worked. Um, because I really think that what happens in the song lyrically um, complements and, and helps flesh out what's happening in, in, in that entire end section. Um, and really the, the whole in section has to do with um, just the difficulty of the task of, of fighting for something that you believe in, um, how difficult it is to change um, these political and cultural um, um, assumptions and paradigms. And that over time, I guess those desires um, can change. Um, can, you can burn out, um, get frustrated, and so all of that was part of um, part of this track, um, leading into how long we wait. <laughs> 